Hey guys, what's up? I'm here in beautiful Jamaica. No, not really. We are in Concord, North Carolina for Steve Pinkerton of CrossFit Vitality. Please go to iTunes, Stitcher, Player FM, all of those. You can hear the full podcast. However, this is the final five or six questions of our actual podcast with Steve Pinkerton of CrossFit Vitality. Here is his website, check it out. But really, really cool dude, enjoy. Smush. All right, so final five questions, here we go. We ask everyone who's on the podcast these five. So first one, what advice would you give to any young entrepreneur out there? Mm. I, I think the one thing I would say would probably be to get out of the mindset of, I think a lot of people are telling everybody, oh, if it's meant to be, it'll just kind of fall into place. And you know, it, if, it's, if, it's, if it's not just happening, it's probably should, you, you probably shouldn't do it. And I think that couldn't be farther from the truth. I think when you find something you want, you just get to force that square peg in that round hole and understand that there's going to be a thousand barriers along the way and you just have to keep the faith that you're doing the right thing and just grind it out because it's not nothing is going to fall into place there's never going to be an opportunity that's worthwhile that's going to be like oh it just kind of fell in my lap and all i got to do is sign this little piece of paper and it's perfect you know and i think that's the thing that you know i, I, I was told growing up like oh if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. No, nonsense. If it's meant to be, you're gonna spend a lot of your time, you know, mad at a lot of different people. What would you be doing if you had not started CrossFit Vitality? The only other thing that I would have done is stay in the Marine Corps. That's the, the, and that was my biggest fear of getting out of the Marine Corps is, am I making this huge mistake because I wanna be surrounded by people that are kinda of like this, you know, this, this support structure. And this is the one job that I could be happy doing if I wasn't going to be a Marine. So I, I miss the Marine Corps, but uh, I, I'd make this decision 10 times out of 10 if I had to. Well said. I also think there's a lot to be said with the fact that it is a fitness well-being product versus you know you launching a, a new beverage or an apparel line or something like that. Like It's so incredibly rewarding to show up every day and have fitness and health around you and healthy people, etc. I, I agree and I think it's, you almost fall in this, uh, a false sense of security because you look around and you're like, oh, this, this is how the world really is, this is you know, but you're in this little bubble where you get outside of that bubble and people aren't like, yeah. you know, it's a completely different world. What does success mean to you? I guess I define success as, you know, not having to work at, you know, 50 years old, you know, I, I I see these guys grinding at 60, 65, 70 years old. I'm like, man, I want to grind now. And, and I think I'll know that I'm successful if at 45 or 50, I don't have to. Maybe I still am because I've got OCD and I've got issues. But I, don't, I, I want to be able to do the things that everyone wants to do now when they're 36. I'm not doing those things. So hopefully I'm either the dumb one that's like missing that opportunity <laughs> or... I'm hoping I'm the smart one that says, okay, I'm gonna grind as hard as I can so that 10 years from now, uh, I don't have to do those things if I don't want to. So that's, to me, success is putting myself in a position 10 years from now where I don't have to work. I got a lot of comments about that, but I'll, I'll take that until I turn this mic off. We're the, we're the same age and we're in different spots. But you're traveling, you're going to Asheville hiking. <laughs> I've got a bed on a massage table back there that I've slept on for the last few years. So yeah, trust me, I might, I might trade places easier. I'll come find you. I'll work for you when I'm 55 <laughs> and you retire. <laughs> what is one thing on your bucket list that you want to do, whether it be work or personal or both? I think go back to... That's a good question. If you ask my wife this question, there's probably... there's. 15 or 20 really good answers that I'm not aware of for her bucket list that I guess I've, uh, I, need to, I need to address. But I think for mine, the only one that I really, I guess I would, would love to do is go back to uh, the city in Iraq where we deployed and kind of did this really cool um, 
kind of uh, you know win the hearts and minds mission over seven months where we went to schools and you know talked to kids and gave them candy and school supplies and tried to build their city back up and I would love to go back over 15, 20 years from now and walk those same streets and be like, man, that's really cool to go back. Because I think so many people, you go do something like that and then it's completely out of your mind. It'd be really cool to see like what, did, did this actually help? Did, did what we do, did it evolve anything? And that would be, hmm. and that'd be really cool. It's pretty admirable. That's amazing. Well, I'd fly private. You know? <laughs> <laughs> if you could go back and change one thing from when you first became an entrepreneur, what would it be? Hey, that's a good, that's a really good question. I hope people don't rank these among all of the different interview people. Um, I guess maybe I'd manage my expectations a little bit differently. I think my expectations were that I could control, that no matter how well I planned, I could always control everything. And I'm such a control freak that if I would just learn to be a little more, um, laid back in that process, I probably would have, there's so many things I've stressed out about that I couldn't control. I just stressed out because I, I was out of control and I didn't like that. So I think that's a really hard thing because most entrepreneurs I would imagine kind of have this obsessive compulsive nature where they want to be in control and you're really not in control a lot of the time and I, I don't deal well with that. So I'm slowly learning that, that skill and uh, it's definitely the biggest hole uh, that I have is, is just my inability to kind of let go of things, you know, so. All right, last question. Yeah. This one's one of my favorites. Uh, Why did you agree to sit down with me and be on the Vicariously podcast? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, I'll, I'll tell you exactly why. I was sitting with Laura and I said, hey, this has got to be the Luke from the, the gym, from Repucon. Because when you said your, you sent the email, it was Luke Wyatt. And I went to the YouTube channel, I'm like, man, that name sounds so familiar. I wonder why he wants to talk to me, like, what in the world? So then when we, we went back and I made her look up the old records, I'm like, that's it. That's it. So as soon as I figured out it was you, I was all in, man. I was all in. So. Hell yeah.